So what are the common reasons that new businesses don't succeed? Now, I was recently reading uh, an article, and, I, and I, I've come across this all the time, and it's always like, oh, cash is the main reason the businesses fail and they run out of money. That's not a reason. That's actually a symptom, right? The reasons, I b believe, really boil down to four things. But I want everybody to understand, and, I, and I'm pretty sure, like any founders and entrepreneurs out there, uh, will agree with me on this one. The first reason that I believe, and after doing this for 25, nearly 30, I guess nearly 30 years now, you know, I've seen businesses succeed, I've also seen them fail. The thing that seems to associate the failure ones is obscurity. The reality is not enough people know you. And that right there is a huge driver in terms of everything else that will happen with your business. Because if you start out from day one, nobody knows you, and in month one, nobody knows you, and month six, still very few people know you, you're going to struggle to generate revenue. And at the end of the day, if you don't have revenue, yes, all these other problems will come in. You will run out of cash. You will hit all kinds of problems. But in essence, that's the main issue, is obscurity. And so as a new business, that's what you have to fight to. I always tell uh, when I'm, you know, sort of when I'm called into like any kind of uh, uh, meeting on the marketing agency side, I always come in and my team know I'm going to say this. Seven billion people knew who you were. Would sales be a problem? And of course they wouldn't be. You know, even if you're in a local town, if everybody in that town, town knew who you were, what you did and why you're the best at it, you wouldn't have a problem. So the other thing, um, the other reason is lack of quality people. Now, I am as guilty as every other business owner because I have done this. And this this has been a huge shift for me in probably the last like sort of uh, seven or eight years. You need to get quality people on board. So as company owners, and, and <laughs> we're all guilty of it, you know, when we're trying to fill places, we're normally working to a budget, we're trying to, we're trying to cut corners wherever we can, and it's kind of, it's really, it's weird when you step back and think about it and go, wow, these people are going to be the people that are going to help me drive my business, you know, to eight, nine, ten figures. And yet what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get the very cheapest person. I'm going to, I'm going to pay the smallest amount and hope that that person is going to realize your dream and be completely dedicated to you. This is a huge, huge issue. And in the consulting side, uh, the family business that I'm part of, that's a consulting firm, uh, we come across this just, I would say, with any client that we normally look at, is that somewhere there is a hiring issue where what you're doing is you're literally getting the wrong people on board. So... Um, that would be my second reason uh, for actually uh, reasons that new businesses don't succeed is they don't get the right people on. Okay, so the third reason is really kind of tying in with the obscurity side, and that's marketing budget. Uh, during during the early, very early 2000s, um, I ended up, and, and again, this was just on the consulting side, we ended up creating... Um, a lot of uh, business plans for businesses and of course you know when you go through you're talking about marketing budgets I was shocked at how many businesses either don't account for it at all or do a pittance to what they should be doing and that right there I believe is a is one of the you know one of the four uh, reasons of why businesses fail is they don't apply a big enough marketing budget to their business here's the thing chances are you are not entering a marketplace that has no clients at all the chances are you are entering a competitive space which means your competitors might have reputation your competitors might already have a large client base you have to compete with that you have to be able to get yourself in front of them remember the obscurity issue well the marketing budget is going to solve that and when I see, and I, 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 you know, gave, I recently wrote um, a post about this. I had a client who, uh, when he was starting up, he he spent fifty thousand dollars on kit kitting out his uh, office, and there was a couple of different, you know, sort of desks and so forth. His desk was, I, I think, it was like five thousand dollars. Okay, do you know what his marketing budget was per month? Five hundred. And he actually said to me, he was like, I don't want to spend more than five hundred. And we actually didn't work with him because it was just it was just pointless because you can't 
expect to get somewhere if nobody knows who you are and you know to me that's that's a huge thing that ties in with obscurity so and the fourth and final thing for me that I've seen is simply lack of planning there's you know and, and I you know it's always easy to 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 blame the media um but I am going to blame the media because they've romanticized this idea of being an entrepreneur. They've romanticized this idea about doing startups and so forth. I actually heard somebody the other day boast of how much money they've lost so far. I mean, they were a tech startup, so, you know, whatever. Um, but that right there, the lack of planning, of understanding the market you're moving into, understanding those three other things, obscurity, marketing budget, people, okay, not planning for those correctly is going to be your downfall. Planning is so important. And what tends to happen in the planning stage, because I've seen this in numerous times, you know, in the, in the consulting uh, family firm that I'm involved in, uh, we don't take new startups at all. Uh, you know, we only deal with established companies. And it's because that it's very difficult to try and convey the point that the planning on so many businesses is wrong you, because normally the marketing works on a basis of well it i'm going to be viral or well you know just all my friends know about me and so forth and these are all terrible planning issues so a lot of it and i understand with with planning a business can sometimes be guesswork but unless you're moving into a marketing space that has no uh, competitors You've already got the market data you need. You know what your competitors currently are spending to achieve their market share. So that should all be part of your planning. You know, everybody's very, people are fast to, to come up with business plans. And like I said, I was involved in developing them, uh, you know, sort of in the early days of the consulting um, firm. And, you know, business plans are great, but business plans tend to be more of guesswork than anything else and I think where business plans fail a lot of the times is that they you know that they'll talk about the ideal situation because a business plan you're normally trying to get money so you're trying to paint your business as as you know sort of bright-eyed and bushy-tailed as you possibly can and that is actually a problem because what you're really not addressing is the realities of doing business um, so those are, for me, those are the four key points of why I see, and this is, you know, this is like nearly 30 years of experience now of seeing, you know, I've had businesses that have failed on me. And I'll tell you that the first one that failed on me was lack of planning. Absolutely 100%. I entered a market space. I literally had no idea what I was doing and I just didn't account for how much, um, uh, funny enough of how much marketing was going to be involved. And what happened was the marketing I, I put in place was really aimed in the wrong channels. So just to go over it one more time, the four reasons that I believe that businesses do not succeed is number one, obscurity. Not enough people know who you are. You're obscure, no one knows, no one can buy your stuff if they don't know who you are. Number two would actually be lack of quality people. We try and cut corners, we hire the cheapest we can, that is going to end up biting you in the butt in the end, okay, and even on the short term. So hire the right people for the job, okay, make sure you're paying the right amount of money for that position. Number three is marketing budget. Do not underestimate how much it's going to cost you if you're moving into a space that already has competitors, you have got to get your name above the noise. And that means you are going to have to pay. Sure, we can produce content, and I'm a big proponent in the, in the marketing agency. I mean, we're predominantly content generators. That's what we really are focusing on. But you still have to pay to get it in front of people. Okay, and number four is simply the lack of planning, which really ties the last three all in together. That lack of planning, you have to be able to look at your business and look at the business you're proposing to do, not through rose-colored spectacles. You don't want to be looking at it thinking everything's going to be right. Ask the tough questions. What happens if somebody copies my business 100% and opens next door to me? What happens if my competitor simply begins outspending me on marketing? What happens if my competitor drops their prices to half or lower than what I can even, you know, sort of produce it for? These types of questions will help you gain the right planning. So like I said, if you have ones to add to this, please add them in the comments below. If you disagree with my reasons, add them uh, to the comments below as well. I look forward to reading them.